Hey guys, how the hell are you? Time for an all new rebiased gear review, and surely you jest. There's no way, Arnold, that you can make the Fisher Price My First Guitar Stack sound good and sound usable. Well, let's see. This is a rebiased gear review on the Crate GFX 1200H. So by this point, hopefully most of us would be aware of what this thing is. It definitely has a very, very, very less than hallowed history. But let me take a moment to really quick give you a super fast rundown of some of the specs of this. This is a 120 watt solid state head. It is technically a two channel head with a lead channel and a clean channel but it's kind of more of a three channel head but with a shared EQ section between channels two and three. You do have two different gain knobs and you can switch between the two so you can get a little bit different voicing depending on which gain you are actually using on this. There is also some onboard effects. We have delay, uh, flange, chorus, a combination chorus and reverb, reverb, as well as a level control for it. With regards to the EQ section of the high gain channel, strangely enough, there is a mid control for the clean channel, but there's no mid control for the high gain channel. Instead, we have this shape control right here, which ends up sort of shaping the mid range characteristic of that channel. On the back, it's extremely minimalistic. There's access for the fuse, there's access for the foot switch, and there's also two four ohm speaker outputs here. So firstly, the nickname that I gave this thing, the Fisher Price, my first guitar stack. Kind of a goofy nickname that myself and a bunch of people I know used to call this thing by because it essentially looked like a cheap toy, and it kind of was a cheap toy. This was something that you would pick up from American Musical Supply back in the day for like $8.99 and it was the full stack. The head and two cabinets. Those two cabinets have the distinction of probably being the absolute worst piece of shit speaker cabinets I have ever heard in my life. But... How much does that actually affect the tone? Because I actually had one of those full stacks and I remember it sounding like absolute ass. But upon first getting this thing, just so that I could use it for a video here and plugging it in and being like, what the fuck? I'm starting to wonder if maybe the reason why everyone hated these things was because of the speaker cabs. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go into the tone demo. Let's check it out. For the purposes of the tone demo, we will be using my famous television model for those warm lows and those crisp clean highs coming from those Seymour Duncan Alnico 2 Pros. Okay, so first things first, let's quickly go over the clean channel so that we never have to do this again.
Some pretty interesting breakup happening there when we're kind of pushing everything. Click on the effects. That would be the chorus and reverb together. Let's try just the chorus. Interesting, but that's enough of the clean channel. Let's turn off the effects and let's get to what we came here for. Okay, so with the high gain channel switched on, we have this gain control in play. We haven't yet engaged gain two and the shape control yet. Very, very noisy little unit, but that's all right, because honestly, it doesn't even seem like we really need all that much gain, so let's just turn it way the heck down.
not too bad. Let's throw an overdrive in front. So the pedal I am going to introduce here is the Clairton Lichtbringer. The settings that I currently have on it are that the bottom is at 10 o'clock, sharpen is at 4 o'clock, and heat is at all, about 10 o'clock as well. That's with it off. Some pretty awesome classic metal tones there. Let's see what that second gain control and the shape knob actually does. Slightly counterintuitive in that with the shape control, you turn it all the way up and it scoops the mids more. Turn it all the way back and you've got a ton of mids on tap. So having it about right there is honestly kind of a nice sweet spot in my opinion. Yeah, let's kick on the effects just for gits and shiggles. That's pretty interesting. Eighties as fuck.
kind of actually really, really like the chorus in reverb. I'm getting some great old school priest out of that. That's pretty rad. So overall, my final thought, I think I've come to the conclusion that the reason why this thing sucked so bad back in the day is because of the speaker cabinets one was running it through. Those cabinets that came with this thing when you bought this were absolutely horrendous. This was the first stack amp I ever owned. I want to say that I purchased it brand new almost exactly 20 years ago, actually. I want to say it was 2000 and was just like, oh, my God, this thing is just terrible, just terrible. But here I am. I'm running this thing into a two notes captor, which is then running into two notes wall of sound plug in like I do for all of my other amps. And God damn it, I'm getting some pretty awesome tones out of this thing for something I spent less than a hundred bucks on. I mean, dude, this has been surprising as all hell. And not only that, it takes boosts rather well. It takes extended range rather well. The clean channel is garbage. The EQ section is this too much. In order to get usable tones out of it, we have to bring the EQ section of the high gain channel way the hell down. But even there, bring down the gain, bring down the treble, bring down the bass till they're about nine o'clock each instead of at noon. And that's a good starting point for finding an awesome usable tone out of this thing. If nothing else, something that you can layer in with a uh, a different amp that you're using as your main tone when you're recording. I mean, it honestly sounded pretty goddamn good. Color me fucking surprised because I hated this thing back in the day, but lo behold, lo behold, it's actually working out and it's working out pretty goddamn well. It could stand to be a little bit more articulate, but what do you expect for something that was $300 brand new? Not too shabby. I think it's about time that uh, we start revisiting this thing as a potential tone that we can add into our arsenal because this was really, really surprising. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel. There's tons more metal guitar oriented content to come. And remember, please, Take what you do seriously, but do not take yourself too seriously.